Thank you, Sean. All right, I think uh, my title stayed the same. I noticed in the, uh, the agenda is a little bit different, but they actually, uh, I like that one a little bit better, so you can read the one off the, the agenda. But how I titled it was Using Exosol to Scale Tableau at Piedmont Healthcare. And first, my clicker works, here we go. A little bit about Piedmont Healthcare. We are currently a seven hospital system around the metro Atlanta area in the United States. Um, we have over 100 physician practice offices. We're an integrated healthcare system, and we're rapidly growing. Um, at the bottom there, you can see just some statistics about the volume that we see. Um, last year, we served nearly 2 million patients, um, 250,000 emergency room visits. We did 235 organ transplants, so we're fairly busy, pretty respectable-sized healthcare system. A little bit about me, I learned earlier this week that I'm actually um, something called a zennial. Has anybody heard that before? It's, it's apparently a new term. Um, I was born in 1980, so I, I sit somewhere between uh, Generation X and the Millennials. I never really felt like I fit exactly into either one of those. So really, really, really means is I had an analog childhood and, and a, more of a digital adulthood. And I think this slide actually um, shows some of that. So this kind of shows my career and how I've learned technology. Really started for me when I was about 15, 16 years old. Um, I picked up programming with Visual Basic, um, and that's the little um, bar that you see at the bottom. That's my self-employed time. And with that time, I actually was writing programs to work with America Online chat rooms um, in Visual Basic. So if you ever saw all of the little scrolly things, people making cutesy pictures in chat rooms, I'm sorry about that. I also helped my dad um, writing some software for him. Uh, for his business, he delivered produce to restaurants and um, grocery stores. So that's what really got me on this journey with technology. And so you can see with a little squiggly line chart, those are different technologies that I started to learn. I started to learn databases when I was in college at the University of Georgia. Um, after that, I started my career at KPMG, uh, doing lots of consulting, advisory work, um, and found myself doing lots of data things as well. But really, my data career took off when I started at Piedmont Healthcare. And so I've been with Piedmont for just a little over seven years at this point. Um, you can see, actually, let me back up just a little bit because I want to point out I'm a little more nervous about this presentation than I have in previous um, presentations that I've done. I, uh, I've actually spoken at the MGM Grand Arena, which was pretty big. Maybe 2,000 2, people were in there, but it seats, I don't know, 25,000 uh, at least. I didn't draw that big of a crowd, but it was still a huge room. But I'm a little more intimidated today because my wife is actually in the crowd, and this is her first time hearing me speak, so I want to make sure that I don't mess this up. She's the only one I really care that much about impressing, so. <laughs> she's actually um, enables me to do all of this stuff, so um, and without her, honestly, I just wouldn't have the time to uh, invest in um, learning all these skills and everything, so she enables that for me, so thank you. <laughs> And you can see I had a transition point with uh, my first child. Ansley was born about the time that um, I joined Piedmont. Um, David was joined also at a transition time for me when I became, um, the, at the time, was the manager of business intelligence. There really wasn't a business intelligence department at Piedmont to speak of. I was its first employee, so that was pretty cool. Today, we have, um, I think, 13 people on my team, plus I have some extended folks. We also have a data architecture team and IS that we partner with. I actually don't sit within IS, I sit within our financial planning and analysis group. So it's this mix of IS and business, um, and we sit, um, I think, really perfectly situated there. When we started, though, the program, I started out with a, a set of guiding principles. I wanted to make sure, you've heard this term today, um, that the data was democratized. We wanted to create this army of data sense makers within the organization. We have a ton of smart people at Piedmont. I want to tap into their creative potential. I don't want to pretend that I'm the guy that's going to do everything for everyone. We also wanted to make sure that our data was immediately available to our decision makers. We wanted to make sure that our data wasn't stale, so you know, at least 24 hours behind. Um, we've fallen behind a bit on that, but Exosol is actually helping us um, catch up on those data sources that were really hard to refresh. Our visualizations, we want to make sure we're kind of seamlessly able to, to drill from this high-level stats that shows you something's red, something's not right, down to the lowest level of detail to make sure people understand what's wrong. And we wanted a uniform presentation layer. So that was twofold. We wanted a single place, a portal, 
for people to go to to consume reports so they didn't have to go to the system and the system to, to get different reports um, out, whether it was from uh, PeopleSoft or our electronic healthcare record system, Epic, um, or from other healthcare record systems that we've had as a part of growing and integrating. But also, more than that, we wanted a single place to build all the content, so Tableau ended up um, being that for us. So Tableau connects to all of our different enterprise data, um, data sources, and it's our tool that we use for building and um, presenting the data. It's also the tool that basically everybody uses for consuming information. One of the first things I built when I joined the BI department as my only employee was to build out a key statistics for our financial, um, kind of our financial key statistics, I guess. So what you see here is, is a, a series of charts, and they repeat themselves. And so it might be inpatients, outpatients, surgeries, and the list goes on. Um, this one report, interactive dashboard, replaced, I think, 40 pages of a printed document that we got out of Crystal Reports that was produced once a month, about 15 days after the close of the month. So big, really, we shipped it on a truck to people as a giant paperweight. Because at that point, you really couldn't do anything. It was just very reactive. That was 15 days ago. A lot's changed um, since that point in time. But the bar chart shows you how we're doing each month. So each of those segments is a month of the year and how we're doing versus our budget. Um, so green is better, red is um, not as good. Sorry for anybody in the, the room that might be colorblind. That's probably a little hard to see. Um, that was before I actually knew a lot about um, how to work with um, colorblind people and doing data visualization, so you'll have to forgive me for that. Next to that, you'll see a trend showing your fiscal year to date progress, and then another line chart showing how you're doing in the current fiscal year versus the same month in the prior fiscal year, along with a forecasted uh, number, which is that little dot you see. Another example of things that we're doing with data is, is more on the clinical side. So this is a readmissions dashboard. So what this looks at is for something like heart failure or pneumonia patients that are coming in, um, what percentage of those are getting readmitted after 30 days? And so the, the bottom chart, the little rainbow chart looking thing there is showing percent readmitted after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. That's each of the little rainbow segments there. The black line representing your total readmission rate for any calls. Your gray line uh, representing getting readmitted with something else. So if you were discharged with heart failure, are you also readmitted with heart failure? And then the red line is readmitted for something else. So it turns out it doesn't really matter too much what you're readmitted for. So that red line could be, um, you know, I was discharged with heart failure, I was readmitted with hit by a bus. So definitely uh, can be frustrating because you can't really control some of those things, right? But it actually affects reimbursement, and so we still have to track it and know how we're doing. This is another clinical dashboard. So this is looking at sepsis. Does anybody know what sepsis is? A few people. So sepsis is a serious blood infection. And a lot of people die from going into septic shock. And it's really important when you come in and you're identified um, as being possibly septic that certain things happen within three hours and six hours. So this one in particular is showing our three-hour bundle compliance. So we want to make sure they get lactates, blood, blood cultures, antibiotics, and fluids, all within three hours of the alert firing. So the um, nurses and the doctors, they get these alerts, they fire, and our healthcare record system, we want to know, are they responding to that in a timely manner? Because it has a huge impact on um, you know, whether the survivability of, of being in septic shock. So we monitor all of that. This was an early early on before we actually cleaned up the data. And that's, that's one of the things that we've noticed. As we put data out there, the data miraculously gets better because now executives are looking at this and saying, why the heck are your, um, your numbers so bad? And so people say, oh, actually, we're just not entering the data into the system. And all of a sudden, miraculously, everybody starts entering data into the system. So data transparency um, has a big effect on data quality. Next, this is more of an operational dashboard. So this is looking at, um, it says OR utilization, but this is really first case on time starts. So if your first case of the day in the OR doesn't start on time, that's going to wreck the rest of your day. So we want to know what percentage of the time are we getting our cases started on, um, on time from when they were scheduled. 
And this was one of the early dashboards. I, I wish I had taken a screenshot of the kind of before and after, because you see that line chart jump quite a bit um, as we started monitoring the data. But it drills down, so you can see what's your high-level number, trended, and which one's uh, areas are your problem areas. Is it a provider? Is it a particular department? And so that can all be tweaked, and that's kind of the list that you see towards the bottom. And then the next one is a Gantt chart, and that actually shows um, what time did the patient arrive, what time did they enter the pre-admission area to get prepped. And then the background bar represents um, what was your plan time, and the foreground bar, the smaller bar, represents whether you actually, or what your actual times were. So you can easily see in that Gantt bar, you know, which ones did we schedule too, um, too much time for, um, which ones started late, which ones went over, and the color coding helps reinforce that. Another example is, um, this is looking at our market share. So we don't do a ton with maps um, at Piedmont, but one of the things that we do do is um, we want to know how we're performing against our peers. And so this is looking at inpatients and what percentage of the inpatient market share do we have at Piedmont versus our peers. So this is from an, um, a organization called Georgia Hospital Association. They feed us this data externally. We import it into our database. We visualize it with Tableau. And then you can see plotted on the map at a zip code level how are we doing in each of those markets? So the size of the bubble is telling us how big is our market. The shading of the bubble tells us whether we're gaining or losing market share in that area. Off to the left side, you can drill to particular service lines and subservice lines. And on the right side, you can see um, which organizations have the most market share and which ones are gaining and losing. Another example, this is looking at patient satisfaction surveys. So we want to know, are our patients happy with our services? So when a patient gets discharged, they get sent a survey. Maybe it's paper, maybe it's electronic. But this organization, Press Ganey, aggregates that information. They feed it back in XML files. We load that into a database, and then we visualize it with Tableau. And so this was uh, an idea that I got from a friend of mine named Steve Wexler um, about visualizing Likert scale data. And so all the stuff that's shifting to the right, that's all good. All the stuff that's shifting to the left, that's the stuff that's not, we're not getting good answers for. All right. Productivity dashboard. So this tells us which um, departments are not performing very well. Um, the key to this one that, that we've learned is that it's important to put names on these things. So if you put somebody's name next to something and they show up at the top of the list that's a bad list, then they're going to respond. They don't want to be on that list because executives see this. Nobody wants their name on a list that an executive sees when it's a bad report. <laughs> and then lastly, um, we have a lot of fun with data visualization. How many of you are familiar with March Madness? So, so some, yeah? I heard a clap, thank you. So my, uh, March Madness is a college basketball tournament in the United States. It gets a lot of coverage. A lot of people get really excited about this. So people fill out brackets. We track all of that stuff and get people used to you know, exciting ways to visualize data. Um, this one's customized to me, which is also important. Um, you heard Alyssa talk about this earlier, making the data relevant to, to individuals. So that red line that you see at the bottom, that's a bump chart that's showing my rank versus everybody else as the game's completed. So you can see um, I started off tied for first with everybody else and then immediate suckage followed by some slightly less worse suckage, and then just all the way suckage the rest of the way across. I'm, this is pretty much every year for me. I'm really terrible at this. I'm, I'm not a basketball player. Um, I don't really follow it. I might as well just pick on team jersey colors. In fact, the one year, um, the guy two doors down from me won this. That's how he picked. He picked, well, I like their jersey colors, so that's what I went with, and he killed it. He actually destroyed everybody else in his picks. All right, so lots of cool things, right? So why Exasol? All right, so here's our topology. It started off simple. We were looking at um, importing EPSI, a decision support software, as an aggregator from all of our healthcare record systems. Um, we imported that into Tableau, very simple. It was working great for us. Then we added Epic. So Epic became our standard healthcare record system, and a huge amount of data came in from that. Then we added our SQL Server EDW attempt number one, attempt number two, the Piedmont Clinic, another um, kind of uh, sub-organization of, of uh, Piedmont, also had their own data warehouse and wanted to use Tableau. And then we had our Piedmont Physicians Group, which also had their own data warehouse. We started implementing a Tableau. Then we added PeopleSoft data, we added Press Ganey data, 
we started adding hospitals, and we have possibly two more hospitals with Columbus coming online, and Piedmont has an aggressive growth strategy. All right, I left a minute warning there. All right, this is an important dashboard. <laughs> Wait for it. All important dashboards take time to load. All right, there we go. All right, I haven't transitioned that one to XSL yet, so it takes longer to load. But actually, that's one of the problems that we've had. Nobody wants to wait even 20 seconds. And I like to think of, um, there was a comedy routine, and the guy said, everything is awesome and nobody's happy. And really, it's, I felt that way a little bit about Piedmont. We've got these things, we, hey, we're only giving you data once a month, 15 days after the fact. On a, shipped on a truck, printed, you couldn't sell anything. And now you get it all interactive, updated every single day, and you can't wait 20 seconds? Are you kidding me? So, no, people can't wait 20 seconds. They're always expecting you know, faster and faster things, so it's one of the reasons why we're looking at Excel. Oh, actually, one more thing with that. Um, you can see load times for our data sources. We're definitely really slow, so six hours to produce that one. So we have a problem. Mark, you can quote me on that. So we bought Exasol. Current state, we have a um, three-node active cluster with one standby. We're in the process of working on adding three more active nodes with 600 gigabytes of RAM. That one data source you saw that was six hours now takes four minutes to load. So most people uh, have no idea about that. I know that means a lot to me because it means if something goes wrong and that one failed because it's red, I got six more hours before I can get that updated data to people. Something goes wrong with XSL, hey, four minutes later, it's all updated. This is what I'm proud of. So this is a lab surveillance dashboard. So this is looking at infections within our healthcare system. So we have infection preventionists that um, review this data. Um, the normalized results that you see there, you probably can't see it very well, but that's actually parsed with regular expressions in these comment fields. And there's a lot of work that goes into that. There's a web form that's um, built on top of this with Tableau's REST API, and it's integrated directly into our healthcare record system. So if somebody wants to know more about a patient, they click on it, it jumps directly to their chart. So this is what, the way it used to work. So at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon, we were able to get the updated data to the infection preventionist from the prior day. It would take one minute for this dashboard to load, and it contained a rolling six months of data. After Exasol, is now available at 8.30 a.m. It takes 10 seconds to load and has 12 months of data uh, history in it. So a big improvement. Um, something we did a lot of is also docu uh, documenting our data lineage, our definitions for information, embedding that directly into Tableau. This is really awesome. It helps people a lot to know where their data comes from. I was able to automate this using Python. And I took this screenshot when it was over Wi-Fi, so it took longer. It says 512 seconds, but one to two minutes, actually, typically, it takes to update 13 Tableau data sources containing over 10,000 fields and write all that definition stuff you saw on the last slide. I did this manually before this. Two sources. I got 700 fields done in five weeks, but it took a lot of bourbon to get there. So drinking and driving, not smart. Drinking and writing data definitions and lineage, meh. Uh, we have our data dictionary, so all that stuff that feeds into those tooltips is also available and searchable in a dashboard. All this sits in Exasol. And also looking at it from a dependency standpoint. Um, so if we want to, we're going to update a data source, um, maybe make a change to a view and other things that are dependent on that, what's going to break? So we can kind of backtrace it this way. And then source to Exasol balancing is so super important. We want to know that everything that we're loading is actually getting updated completely every single day. And we can see what our record count variances are. In some cases, we have drill downs, so we can see maybe it's a particular day that has an issue, and we can find the source of that and correct it. And people's names are on this too, so they know, hey, my name shows up a lot. I probably should get on this and fix my stuff. And then this is pretty cool too. So this is field by field profiling. So maybe I loaded all the records, but something in a column changed, and we didn't pick that up because the incremental didn't catch that record. So I want to know field by field within the tables, how do we compare to our source systems? So the reds are things where we have variances. So some stats about that. I've got a Python script that actually runs all of this. Um, Exasol is able to profile 45.5 records per minute. 
I do the same thing on a SQL server, source systems, and it profiles 1.8 fields per second. That's 25x um, faster than SQL server. So on average, it takes me 12 days within a four-hour operating window to profile all those fields in SQL server. XSL is able to do all of that in two hours. I'm also able to monitor all of my queries. I actually have to mine some of this from Tableau's log files because Tableau, uh, when people consume information through Tableau, it's a system account that hits, hits XSL. Tableau's log files lets me trace it to the actual users, and I can see what crazy queries they're running, like this one that had 3.7 million records returned and took 30 minutes, which was and then loaded all that memory, uh, data into RAM. So that was really frustrating. So I'm able to contact those users directly and say, what the heck are you doing? And then security is important. So I'm able to easily do both record level security and also column level security just by setting up my views. And then I feed that into Tableau and people have the right uh, information that they should be able to see. All right, so in summary, XSL has dramatically increased the amount of data available to our end users. Our environment currently offers single table sizes of over 1.6 billion records and modeled sources with over a trillion records. We have really, really complex data in healthcare. I would argue that we don't have nearly as many transactions as some other industries, but I would bet that our, our relationships between information and healthcare are far more complex. 25x faster than SQL Server on simple aggregations, 50x faster on more complex queries from what we've seen, and outperforming our Tableau extracts um, by an average on, of 3x in an apples to apples comparison. Uh, data source loads are accomplished in minutes rather than hours, as you saw. Security is super easy to apply just by updating views, um, putting people in different tables and saying, you can access this, but not this. Direct data base access is now something that we permit. In SQL Server, that was a big no-no. No possibility we're going to do that because it would interrupt operations so badly. But because XSL is so fast, we have the trust that we could give end users with training direct access to the database. And then fields are standardized and well-documented. Um, my automated process um, has helped me a ton with that. And what it really means is that my alcohol use is now limited to socialization instead of being my coping mechanism for monotonous work. <laughs> so that's my presentation. And um, if, you were, if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter. And you can follow my blog at ugamarkj.blogspot.com. I blog about both Tableau and XSL as well as Python, any, basically anything that I'm interested in, that, uh, anything that's interesting to me. Anyway, you can find all of that stuff on my blog or follow me on Twitter.